takes that power, puts it on the sticky stuff, and goes. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think Colin's aggressiveness comes in a completely different manner. Of Colin's very comfortable in his car. He knows where the limits of his car are. He knows where his car works because anytime we see that guy get out in clean air, he runs the middle of the track. He will. He always runs the middle of the track when he gets in clean air and he's in the lead. Now, I've also seen the aggressiveness of Colin of when there is a hole where his car might fit, he puts his car sure. in that hole. Yeah. I mean, he he's very much watching that guy come through traffic. I sit there week after week and I go, is that car going to fit there? <laughs> yep. Sometimes it does, <laughs> yeah. and sometimes yeah. it's a little tighter than he expected. He is, uh, he, like you said, he's he's one of the, as a fan, I'm talking, if you're a fan of the grandstand, sitting mm-hmm. in and watching the races, he is definitely one of the more fun drivers to watch. I mean, he's... He doesn't put on the fireworks show like Rob May and Trevor Glasser do run the top side, but he puts on a show. But he'll hunt the track, too. Colin, you'll see Colin work two, three different lines in one race to get to the front where, you know, one guy has committed himself to the top because the car's working there and he'll stay there. He's Whether a, he's moving forward or not, Colin will, you know... Colin, Colin's a very methodical racer. He is. He is, and we've seen him do it time and time again and, again, you know, last Saturday. Absolutely. Put him, put him back in the winner's circle, and so congrats to him, and uh, another victory. I think we're going to see a lot more of that in 2017 with the way he started his season. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of hard to say that. Yeah, you know, it makes you wonder how uh, this. And I said it a couple weeks ago too. Is is I've never seen anybody. And I'm talking on the redraw for the late model or whatever. I've never seen anybody draw like he does. Have you ever seen anything like it? I mean, no. Well, <clears throat> I haven't. I not, truly have not, not seen the driver consistently him. pull front row starting positions. Well, I, I've seen consistency when pulling from the redraw this year. We've seen consistency. On t- on two drivers. Two drivers. Colin and Joey. Exactly. That's it. I mean. If the luck, you know, Colin's always starting on the fir- front row and Joey's always starting in the back end of the, the redraw. I right. mean, I feel bad for both of them because, I mean, in, in all reality, I feel bad for Joey because he's got talent and he always has to work his way through traffic. And a lot of times. There's some risk in there. There's some risk. We've seen him get caught up in things. Right. Where and I feel bad for Colin as well because as a driver, if you start out in clean air, all you're going to do is go out and win. You're not getting the experience to go to the next level and to go and build your racing program and to build your skill level. I mean, but when we, you're building your racing program and people are looking at it, what's the first thing they look at? WWW. There you go. I mean, I'll take that front row uh, any day. I mean, honestly, just, just like a bet. If, if, if I'm a, now, here's the thing. Here's my argument to uh-huh. this though, and I've said it a million times. I can't stand watching fast guys start in the front. I can't either. Growing up watching racing at Willamette Speedway, the fast guys always started in the back of the pack. The faster you qualified, the farther back you started. Mm-hmm. Now we've got the top 10, 8, 10, 12 cars in a redraw where you can see the fast qualifier start on the front row. Or start on the As, back row. <clears throat> or some, but Right. But, I mean, if you see, okay, let's just say you're at a late model race. And we do the redraw. And let's say Colin Weinbarger and Joey Tanner or or John Duty and Rob Maya pull the two spots for the front row. Mm-hmm. As a race fan, how fun is that? I personally, I don't think it's that entertaining. It's not. Because, I mean, you want to see those guys it's work not, their traffic. You want to see those guys put on a show and move. And that's what Willamette Speedway is known for is the fast guys winning championships from the back. That's one thing I just don't like fast guys starting up front. I know the fast guys. I mean, Colin's not going to say, well, I don't want to start in the front. Joey's not going to say it. Rob May or any other fast guy is not going to say, I don't want to start in the front row. Put me in the back. They're, of course, they're going to take that top spot. Who wouldn't? I would. As a driver, Absolutely. I, I, I would. As a race fan, I think it totally sucks. Mm-hmm. I agree. But that's just my opinion, and not that it matters much anywhere I go, but... <laughs> You know, it's just <laughs> you're flying your opinion out there. I'm flying well, and, out there, and, and as know. and as especially as an announcer, it's just when you see the fast guys up front, you know they're going to check out in two or three laps. And, Absolutely, and but we, you, you got nothing to really with those guys until they get to lap traffic. If they get to lap traffic, even then, you know we we probably ought to pull some stats for next week's show so we can really <clears> get some put some time into the research. But I, I'm curious, you know, we're a couple races into the season. How many of our guys that qualified fast time or you know did really good in the redraw? How many of them won from the front? The only one that comes to mind is Weinbarger. We'll look at it. We'll look at it. I mean, you know, we and then we saw that race um, where Roger that barbecue put up some extra money along with 
Northwest Trucking Academy. Uh, Prime example of what I'm talking about you, right you, there. You put Kevin Roberts and David Cronk, who were going to start on the front row to the Hands back. Hands down the race of the year. And oh, my Lanta. Those boys just checked out and had some fun. <laughs> it took them six laps to get through traffic over the front. Yeah, Six laps. And that was the most exciting six laps we've seen in 2017. Well, even then, it was slide job after slide job. Yeah. I mean, we were reliving the first modified race of 2016. With, yeah, with, with those Lightning, drivers and street stocks. With Lightning and uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Weinberger. Uh, Weinberger. Wow. How do you forget that one? <laughs> My brain's fried, dude. I've been thinking, talking racing all day. I mean, oh, we've God. Been, I'm we've shot. been sitting here in the Jetstream Mock Massage studio. For three hours. Three hours watching racing videos. Yeah, talking with drivers around the country on what we're going to get into for the show. Um, and it's going to be an interesting topic. It's going to be, it's already been interesting because, you know, you're comparing notes with who you're talking to, who I'm talking to. The biggest thing is, you know, when you talk the co- the rising cost of, of, of motorsports, especially dirt track racing, and what has been proven, this, this has been proven today, talking with, let's just say we talked to 20 different drivers. We got 20 different answers on why the cost of, of racing is going up. And some of those answers were quite <clears throat> quite colorful some of them were on point some of them were well i never thought about it like that you know well that doesn't make sense well wait a second yeah you know i mean it's been i really think this is just a matter of perspective and i don't there's not a right or wrong answer for this because a lot of this comes down to well, I can't argue with Pat because that's what we did forever at Willamette Speedway. Absolutely. Pat Marinko says, quit the redraw, start with the field inverted, and give passing points. No argument for me, Pat, and not at all. Um, but going back, you know, let's let's really get into the show. Let's get into, we've got three, two and a half hours to talk about this. The rising cost of motorsports, it, it really is, I think, <clears throat> from what you're, per- I think it comes down to your own perspective. What is expensive to you? What matters to you? What is your, I want to say, your means of living? Because that's going to that's gonna count. Absolutely. Stuff. You know, you can talk about, we can talk about the cost of the engine. We can talk about the cost of the cars. We can talk about the cost of the parts. We can talk about, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about all this stuff. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We're going to talk about it. We can talk about the cost of fuel, travel expense. We can talk, I mean, there's going to be a multitude of topics. We're going to talk, subtopics. We're going to talk about under this one tonight and I want this Swears Trucking chat line lit up. I want to hear when we're going to have a we have a great call in scheduled <clears throat> that will uh give us an education. Absolutely. I mean truly give us an education on on this and what's happening locally and nationally. Absolutely. And, it's going to be a great <clears throat> call in. And when I had this conversation, I spent an hour on the phone. mm mm-hmm. Mhm with this conversation. So I kind of know what's coming, but you look at what's happening locally. You look at what's happening nationally. And I think really the big picture is what those guys are doing in the world of outlaws, what those guys are doing in the Lucas series affects so much locally because when you're that guy trying to win races and you see the top guy winning with that part, I got to have that part. Absolutely. Well, you look at, Think back a couple of years ago when certain driver, who I know you, everybody's going to know who this is when I start talking about <laughs> it, goes out there and wins 17 races in a right. season. Yeah. Oh, it was the chassis. It was, it was automatically the Shaw chassis. Yeah. So everybody went out and bought a Shaw's. Cool. Great. Great deal for Shaw. Great deal it for Shaw. It wasn't the chassis. It wasn't the chassis. I mean, you <laughs> saw you saw those that, dri- that same driver getting a different chassis. Right. And continue his Continu- winning ways. Continue to dominate the field. Here, and, and while we're talking about cars, and I'm glad you brought up mm-hmm. Shaw. Uh, I know you're talking modified right there, but I, I had a conversation with a chassis dealer, and we're not, not going to say their names, not going to promote anybody's names, and I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. All the stuff I'm going to talk about tonight, with the exception of our caller, will probably remain confidential. Just because, I mean, the name doesn't matter. Well, and that's the thing, too, is you start talking to guys about this topic, and that's one thing that we ran into quite frequently this afternoon when we were doing our research was we start ta- when you start talking about different products, you start getting very close to setup knowledge. Right. And people in the sport, as most of our listeners are well aware, they hold that information very tight. They sure do. And so a lot of, these, a lot of the information we got was on the premise of, <clears throat> okay, you got to keep 
where this is coming from, very quiet, number one. And we heard that a lot. And number two. Well, I'll tell you part of what's going on, or, or you know, there I'll, was. I'll tell you about 50 per, or about 20% of it. Right. I'll tell you part A and part B. But in order to get to part M, I'm not going to tell you anything right. else. Yeah. So for everybody, for everybody out there that's listening, for all, everybody's got their, their computers turned on, their phones, they're listening, driving down the road, whatever. Why is racing so expensive now? Why is the cost going up and up and up? What is the major factor causing that for everybody at not just late models or modifieds, but even in the street stocks, even in the four cylinders? We talked to drivers all the way down to carts. I mean, we talked to pavement guys too. Right. I can tell you my cart sitting here has probably it's got about $5,000 into it. Now, that means I'm going to go out and race against guys which I've done that have 18 to 20 grand in their cart. Mhm. Because it's got all the trick stuff. I've driven by those guys in the feature from 15th to 2nd to 3rd to the top spot. You can spend all the money you want. <clears throat> you can have the most expensive race car out there. But okay. if you don't have the right guy behind the wheel. Exactly. What good is all that money? Um, interesting thing. I'm going to just, again, subtopics. We're going to talk about this. Interesting things that we heard. Engines. The cost of engines are so outrageous. Absolutely. Are they? Oh, my gosh. Are they? Okay. Here's another one that people said, and that this came up a lot. Mm-hmm. Why is racing so expensive? The rules they give us. The rules they give us make racing expensive, and we'll talk some more about that later on. Another big one, fuel. Cost of fuel was a big one. Yep. Shocks. Um, shocks, and we're going to talk a lot about that because that was one that I'd say 85% of the people we talked to, maybe 90%, Everybody mentioned shocks, and the biggest thing was technology, and that's a broad spectrum. Absolutely. Technology. You start talking the technology <clears throat> changes that have happened on these cars. I mean, not even 10 years ago, what was the suspension under all these cars? Right, and we're going to save that just for a little bit later on, but mm-hmm. I know where you're going, and you're right. Um, talking with a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys said, you know, tires are getting so outrageous. The cost of a tire eight, ten years ago was about $18, $18 more than it is now. <clears throat> is it really getting that much more expensive for tires? I mean, is that, that's not, I mean, yes, it contributes to the overall cost of racing going yeah. up if you're going through a tire a week or two tires a week. I get that. But at the same time, why are you going through that tire? Well, <clears throat> we can make them, there's ways to make those tires last longer. There's ways to make all this stuff last longer, but the, the cost of motorsports is, and I, I've talked a lot about it on the show. I've made reference after reference to, I hope, <clears throat> especially dirt track racing, doesn't go the direction the IndyCar did. And I know that's a weird comparison because you're talking tens of millions of dollars in IndyCars, and that you're not on that level. Crap, of, their steering wheels are $45,000 a right, piece. Right, just for the steering wheel. Because all the telemetry in it, but it's 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 relative. It's all relative. I don't want racing to price itself out so high where you're only seeing ten cars show up for a feature in a late model, or you know, twelve cars for a modified, or you know what I mean. I, I don't want to see that continue because that is not a good thing. No, it's <clears> not. And so some of the things I want to hear tonight from a lot of our listeners or drivers, fans, crew chiefs, whoever you are. How can we prevent the cost of racing to rise any higher than it is? What I want options. I want to hear viable options of how we can keep the cost of racing down. Now, a lot of these guys are going to say rules. Okay? I, we had some great conversations earlier today where drivers qualified themselves by saying, hey, look, the rules they give us make the cost of racing a lot higher than it needs to be perfect example of that was <clears throat> talking to a driver on the east coast again no names had some uh had a little setup on their right front that we we can't discuss on the air had a little trick set up on their right front suspension was doing really really well okay 
and a lot of drivers started complaining about